Hey Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking once again, and we're off and running to the races on a old-fashioned game of arena while we talk about some news that's related to Magic, but actually about flesh and blood. So I'm pretty sure most of you probably already turned the channel off. Uh, for those of you who are going to stick around, remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's have some comments down below so we can really push this uh, channel views and so forth up through the YouTube algorithm to get a little more support for the channel. I really do appreciate it myself, and any support you guys can give is always welcome. Uh, just like in the link below, uh, you'll also notice that there's a link to the eBay store, which also helps support the channel, and I can't thank you enough for everything you guys do for me as we move on. So, with all that said, trade tables, seat backs, full upright position, boys and girls, because we are now moving on to the news with Mark Poole. Now, for those of you who don't know, Mark Poole is a legendary Magic the Gathering artist. Um, he has drawn so many different cards, I cannot tell you. Uh, obviously, the legendary card he is known for is Ancestral Recall from ABU, um, where for one blue is an instant, target player draws three cards. Um, and over the years, some people may look at that card and they're like, oh, that card doesn't look very well, or XYZ. Uh, his art's gotten a lot better. Uh, sometimes his style of art depends on what people are asking for as well, so we got to be careful about that and how you judge it. But needless to say, his art is amazing. I love Mark Poole. I've met him at a couple conventions. He's a cool guy, uh, really nice. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go to a convention and meet Mark, you really should do so. Um, but with all that said, the real news here is now Mark Poole has been commissioned and is going to work with flesh and blood to start making cards and draw cards for them um that's really big news considering he's been such a magic hot topic for so long uh because of all the things that he does and he knows uh, and all the art he's always done which has been very popular uh just in general has been uh through magic the gathering uh starting with the new flesh and blood set coming out in september i think don't quote me on that uh mark Poole has drawn a special art card for them uh four card in the set uh if you'd like to know how i found this um i'm sure some of you are probably gonna be a little upset about this but uh i watch other obvious youtubers uh just to see what kind of stuff they're doing i watch other box openings because i do box openings on my channel sometimes that just doesn't quite give me the fix i need to watch box openings um and what i've seen in the news from another channel uh this would be you know over on rudy's channel valve investments uh, he has spoiled the art for the new card, not what the card does or anything. Um, I'll leave a link to Rudy's video in the description down below. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that, there's there's a couple reasons for you guys get all mad at me. Uh, one, I don't like stealing content that is for one uh, or another YouTuber who has been promised that content. Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, I can go in there. I can clip art and all that good jazz and steal the pictures and so forth and so on. Um, I think that's kind of scummy, um, even if I was making money doing this, which I'm not because I don't have at least a 1,000 subscribers. I still don't think it's cool, guys. Um, also, too, who knows, maybe you'll like a couple of his videos, maybe something will come of it, yada, yada, yada. But I think it's the right thing to do to not steal people's stuff. Um, now, I'm more than happy to report on it and then direct you to what their stuff is so you can go – so they can get a view from you as well as you go check it out. So uh, with all that said, uh, not a whole lot in the news other than that, although – uh, for those of you who want to stick around, I'm going to ramble a little bit about what kind of implications I think this has on Magic and Flesh and Blood as a whole. Of course, while I play my game. Um, so, just something to think about, right guys? Um, so, as far as implications to actual Magic the Gathering and, and what it means... Um, like, like we mentioned before, Mark Poole is synonymous with this game. Um... He's done a lot for the for the game as a whole. He's a great artist, as always, and has done many, many things um, art-wise and card-wise to really flesh out the Magic the Gathering experience for us, which is just amazing. It's phenomenal, and a lot of people love it. And I love it, too. I'm not going to say I don't. Like, you know, I love Mark Poole. I love his art. I love everything he does. Um, now... What does that mean for Magic that he's drawn for Flesh and Blood? Now, easy answer. It means nothing. It just means that now he's going to be commissioned to do um, 
flesh and blood stuff and magic stuff and it means nothing at all. Or, on the flip side, uh, what it could mean is that, you know, magic is trying to, quote unquote, get away from um, maybe other things inside the realm of how they pay their artists or do this or do that. Uh, which could be very bad for some people, um, or the pay uh, if the other company is better, which could very easily um, send Mark or any other artist to Flesh and Blood for better things like better pay or better this, better that, right? So there's lots of things that could be happening here, uh, which could show a shift, if you would, in the market of where these things go, who's going to draw what, and who's really making the money. And when you, when you talk about making money, we're talking about end-of-day dividends, right, guys? So, you know, Magic has these record-breaking years, but a lot of that comes from them cutting corners and cutting things out of the product, cutting out events and so forth and so on. And then the one thing that they don't do is they've been, they've been stopping the reinvestment into the product as far as prizes, cards, you know, reward programs, things like that have been slowly coming to a halt over time because they don't think they're necessary. And maybe they're not, but at the same time, you know, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of viewers who really, really, really enjoyed those kind of art cards and what have you. Um, and it really made them fond of the game and some people did quit because that. now some people stayed and so forth and so on. So one thing this could mean um, just in generic terms, to be honest with you, is a shift in what people like and a shift in what people actually invest in. Um, because if flesh and blood becomes the old magic, you know, and magic becomes a new kind of magic, what it could really mean, guys, is I guess what I'm getting at, is you'd have, you have like two pillars of the community, right? You have old magic players who love the old way, love the old cars, they play Legacy, they play Vintage, they like the way it was, they don't mind it changing, they just don't want it changing so much that it's not the game they love to begin with. Now with that said, you have the new players who want that new, that flashy, that all that really cool stuff. And so you have a divide, right? And what we may see start happening is that divide ends up coming from where uh, the old players who are slowly been getting out of the game um, may finish coming out of the game and, and so forth, um, and finally exit the game while older ones who've already exited come back and start investing in flesh and blood, which may be the trend that we're seeing from all the flesh and blood players. Um, and then the new magic players who want that new flashy stuff stay with magic. And then you have basically, so instead of magic catering to two areas, they just cater to one, uh, which may make them money still and may make them extra, you know, more money than they're used to. But is it sustainable, you know, when, Magic has had that when the old guard of magic has kept magic alive so long. If the new guard of magic, which is these new players who want the new flashy, you know, instant gratification stuff, if they're fickle enough where if they don't get it, they leave, then magic could easily topple because those players leave and now the old guard is gone who always supported them and gave them those kind of things that they needed to get that stuff done and keep the, the game afloat, per se. So it's really tricky because that old guard switching over to flesh and blood, if that's what's happening could really prop up flesh and blood as the next big thing um, and really start sidestepping uh, magic in general to the point where it's just going to walk right past it. And it's very interesting to think that way. So these are just my kind of comments and thoughts. Now, you know, once again, I'm no expert. I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball of what's really going to go on or what's really going to happen. Um, but... It is interesting to think about it when you think about it in that kind of way, right? Like what's really happening? What's going on? What's the next big thing? And can can magic and flesh and blood uh, together through what, whatever means it is that they're using to try to stay afloat or become big in flesh and blood's point, are their strategies going to pan out or is it going to be bad? Right now it looks like flesh and blood is, is coming in strong and doing well. I mean I'm going to be honest. I've even thought of myself of getting some of the – Flesh and Blood cards boxes, uh, not to collect because it's so hard to get the product, but the unlimited ones to get the play, just to play the game, is really cheap. We're talking 50, 60 bucks a box, guys. I mean, 
that's a really cheap investment just to get some cards and play. So I'm really starting to think, you know, I could play this game really cheap and invest in Magic um, and just stop playing Magic. So, I mean, there's lots of dynamics to this, right? Or play both. But with Magic not having any actual big tournaments in person, which is what I like, why would I keep investing in that if it's not gonna if I'm not gonna get what I want? When Flesh and Blood is actually starting to have a pro tour, have that big play, um, I think it's gonna drive a lot of the Magic players to Flesh and Blood because they're gonna be what Magic always was that people loved. While Magic tries to transform into something new that may not be sustainable, or maybe it will be sustainable and more profitable. But who knows, right? So, a lot of good questions, not a whole lot of answers. Speculate down below with me, guys. Tell me what you think. Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you have a new perspective on it? What do you think about all this? And what do you think it means for the future of Magic and everything else, uh, TCG in this world that we love? Because, you know, there's always there's still Pokemon. There's still this. There's still that. It's not an end of the world, but it could be the beginning of something new. So with that said, guys, thanks a lot for your time. Remember, comment down below. Tell me what you think. I'll answer. And as always, until next time, remember to be kind. This is your captain speaking.